In this video we're going to show you how to create a raised panel as you can see in the image there using a specially shaped cutter and the profile toolpath. We're going to start with a simple vector that represents the outline of our raised panel then we're going to import another vector that represents the geometry of our tool shape and we're going to show you how to edit that and add it to the tool database. Then we'll show you how to create the profile toolpath to machine around the raised panel here and then cut that panel out from our material. Let's go ahead and start a copy of the software. So let's come over and click on the icon to open an existing file. And from the project folder, I'm going to select the file cabinetdoorvector.crv and hit open. And here you can see we've got a single vector that represents the outline of the raised panel that we're looking to cut. Now to make our raised panel, we're going to take a shaped cutter and run it around the outline of the part here. Now we can either draw the vector that will represent the data for the shaped cutter or many tooling manufacturers will actually supply you with this geometry, typically maybe as a DXF file or something that you can download from their website. Here I've got some geometry for our cutter that I'm going to import, so we'll come over, click on the icon to import vectors from a file and again in the project folder I've got a file called rpog.eps and we'll just select that and hit the open button and there if I zoom in with the mouse in the middle of the screen and click to deselect you can see the vector that represents our cutter. This vector represents the full outline of the tool but for us to create a shaped cutter in the software we only need the right hand side of it and no top on that vector and that will allow us to create what we call a form tool in the tool database. So I need to edit this vector to just pull out the geometry that we need. So I'm going to select the vector here I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to go into node editing. You can also access that through this icon here. Now we can see the constituent parts of our vector and we can make some edits to it. What I'm going to do is come up and hover over the span at the top here so I see the cursor change and we get the little wavy line. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say that I want to delete that span so we get rid of the top part of the vector. Next we only need the right hand side of this so we'll cut the vector here. So I'm going to click and drag a little box around the midpoint of our vector there. Again I'm going to right mouse click making sure I'm over the node, come down and choose the cut vector option. I could also have accessed that with the shortcut key of hitting the letter C on the keyboard. If we click that it's going to divide that vector in two. Now I can click back to go into selection mode. I can select the left hand side here and hit delete on the keyboard in order to remove that. So let's just uh, hit F on the keyboard now to fit the window there. We could also do that with the icon here. Now we have the geometry we need to create our cutter. So let's go ahead and select it. It's very important that that vector is selected. Let's go over to the toolpaths tab. So we'll click on the icon here and that'll close the design tab on the left and open the toolpath tab on the right. And what I want to do with that vector selected is click on the icon here to display the tool database. So we click there, that'll bring up the tool database and now we can choose where we want to put that cutter. We can either create a new folder or in this case what I may want to do is just put that within the form tools area. So I'm just going to click on the little plus there, I'm going to select that form tools folder so the tool will be created in there and then I'm going to click on the button that says new. Now the key part here is as soon as I come to the drop down list and choose the form tool option the software will look and see if I have a vector selected and if I do it'll assuming that it's the appropriate data as in the right hand side of the tool geometry with no top on it it will pick up that and automatically create a tool for me based on that particular vector picking up its diameter and showing me a little image of what the tool will look like here. Now your tooling supplier should be able to provide you with a sensible set of speeds and fees for your tool and we can add that information now. We can also come in and change the name as well if we want to. So here I'm just going to call this RP for raised panel and then type OG. The diameter has been picked up from the vector. I'm going to change the pass depth to be 0.2 step over to be one although very rarely would I imagine I would use this tool for something where we're actually going to step over mostly we're going to be profiling with it let's enter uh, spindle speed here of 12,000 rpm and we'll change the feed rate to be inches a minute and we'll set that to be 80 and plunge of 30 here 
we'll just make that tool number one in this case. I don't have a tool changer, so I'm not too concerned with that. Obviously, if you're planning to do this yourself, you need to make sure that the values you're using for the tool are appropriate for your particular setup. Here, let's go ahead and hit apply now. You can see that's been added to the tool database there. And if we hit OK, we know we'll be able to access that now when we're calculating different toolpaths. So now we're ready to start thinking about the data we actually want to cut with that tool. So here we've got a vector which is the outline for our rays panel. But what I need to do is create a vector offset inside from this that will be the edge of the area that we want to shape with that tool. So if we come back over to the design tab, if we click on the icon here, it will switch us back over. And then what we want to do is offset that inwards by um, whatever distance that happens to be and there may be recommendations for that again from the tooling manufacturer both in terms of that horizontal distance and also the depth of cut. In this case what I want to do is click on the offset selected vectors icon we're going to offset inwards here and we're going to go in by a value of one and three eighths of an inch and I don't need to check any of the options here I'm just going to hit offset and close and that's created my new vector there. Now this is the vector that I'm going to cut around, so I'm going to select that vector, click on the icon to go back to the toolpaths tab, and with that new offset vector selected, we can check our material setup. So let's click on the set button here. In this case, we're working with three quarter inch thick material, so that is correct. I'm going to go from the top of the block in this case. Uh, XY datum, we're probably going to work in the lower left corner, so we'll click on that there. And the other values here, um, are fairly reasonable we can edit those if we want and if you are planning to cut this yourself then you just need to make sure that you calculate the toolpaths using settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine the tooling that you've got available and the material that you're going to use so here if I'm happy with that I can hit the OK button again now just making sure I've still got that vector selected we can click on the icon to go into the profile toolpath we're just going to do a simple 2D profile around that vector so start depth is going to be zero cut depth for this is going to be half an inch again that's uh, what's recommended from the tooling manufacturer for this tool I want to make sure that I've got show advanced toolpath options checked here as we're going to come back and use one of those in a moment now I'm going to hit select and from the tool database I'm going to choose the tool that I added there and hit OK. Software tells me it's going to take three passes which is OK. We want to cut outside of that selected vector there so we know that will then become the inside edge um, for the shaped part of our raised panel. I'm going to come down here and ignore the other options for the moment and just down to the bottom here and we'll call that profile OG and hit calculate. Software is going to automatically open the preview toolpath form once that's calculated and show us the toolpath we've created there. And at this point we can go ahead when that's selected and click on preview selected toolpath. There we can see the finished result of that. Because I had the animate preview unchecked we didn't see the tool being animated there we just see the end result. Now I can see that looks okay. There's a couple of things um, I probably want to be aware of now though. One is uh, obviously with the size of material that we've got specified here the tool is cutting outside of that. So I'd need to very much be aware of the fact that where my 0, zero position is I'm going to be cutting below and to the side of that and I'd need to think about things like how the material is being clamped, make sure that the clamps are not going to be affected by the toolpath here. If I did want to move this over, then what I want to do is go back into um, the job setup over on the drawing tab and make edits to the overall size or the position of my lower left hand uh, corner within that, those settings. Here though, I'm going to just assume that I'm aware of those clamps around this and that I'm not actually going to be interfering with anything. The other issue that I've got here is by default when I do a profile toolpath it'll roll around the corners. Now that's okay on the inside edge here of the profile because it gives me a sharp corner there as it rolls around the edge of the tool creates that sharp corner and then it carries on. 
But when I'm doing something with a shaped cutter like this, it means that the pieces that are further away from the corner will actually be rounded off. And there is an option where I can override that setting and make sure that I do get sharp corners, um, which will give me more of a kind of mitre effect, which is what I'm looking for in this case. So let's go ahead and just hit undo last in order to go back to the beginning of the preview and hit close. With the toolpath selected, I can either double click it or I can click on the icon here to edit the toolpath. So the one with the pencil there, I'm just going to click that. That'll reopen the toolpath for me. And now, again, if I make sure the advanced options are checked, I can come down to this section here and click on the tab for corners. In the corners area there, I've got the option to check the box that says sharp external corners and this will just force the toolpath to make square corners for me as it goes around the outside of my vector. So we'll just hit calculate, that'll replace the original toolpath because we were editing it. You can see now in the toolpath itself that I've got these sharp corners and with that selected, let's just switch on the animate preview and slow that down a little bit and hit play. And there we can see that animating. We can maybe speed that up a little. And then we should see that rolling around the corners there. So this time now as it rolls around it's going to come past and then straight back down again, past and straight back down. And so we get these nice sharp corners here rather than it rounding them off. So I'm happy with the way that looks at the moment. The last thing we need to do is calculate a toolpath to cut this out. And one thing we can be aware of is the part where we're going to come down and start cutting this out, we've already machined down to a depth of half an inch. So we don't need to machine away that material, we can actually work with a start depth of half an inch and then just cut out the last quarter of an inch of our raised panel. So let's go ahead and hit close there. We'll come back over to the 2D view, I'm going to select the vector for the outside, I'm going to come back and select the profile toolpath option here. So say we're going to put in a start depth of 0.5 and that means our cut depth only needs to be the balance of material which in this case is 0.25 of an inch. So the total depth of cut there is going to be 0.75. Next we want to select our tool so I'm going to click the select button. Now I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill from the tool database. Go ahead and hit OK. If we want to edit any of the parameters we can hit the edit button. Um, I think I would like to do that in a single pass so we'll just change the pass depth to 0.25. Uh, maybe increase speeds and feeds if that's appropriate for us. Go ahead and hit OK. I do want to cut outside of that vector that I've got selected there. And if I wanted to I could add tabs to hold the part in place. I'm going to assume in this case that we've got a way of holding this down, maybe a vacuum uh, bed on our machine so I don't need to add tabs. I could add leads or ramps if I wanted to on the toolpath here. Again we'll just take the default settings in this case, call the toolpath profile cutout, hit calculate. We can see there that toolpath is well within the area that we've already machined with the OG cutter. Now if we just preview the selected toolpath, there we can see that being cut out. And if we wanted to, while in the preview toolpath form, I can double click here in order to get rid of the waste material. And now we can see very clearly what our finished part's going to look like based on that shaped cutter running around the outside there creating our single raised panel in this case. If we're happy with that, we can close the preview toolpaths form. I can select each of my toolpaths in turn, click on save toolpaths, choose the appropriate post processor from the list here, and then hit the save toolpaths button in order to save those out and run them on the machine. I'm not going to save the toolpath in this case, but we'll just close that there and we'll save the file itself. So we'll come up to file, save as, and let's go ahead and call this raised panel toolpath and hit save and you'll be able to find that um, particular file in the project folder if you want to take a look at it. And at this stage that actually concludes this tutorial.